Hi guys, this is Amanda from Amanda Owen Online Education. If you joined our online lesson earlier this week, we covered some electrochemistry, we've gone through some redox reactions, we looked at the differences and similarities between galvanic and electrolytic cells. And in this video, we're going to look at galvanic cells in a little bit more detail. So the specific galvanic cell that we are going to look at today is the nickel, I'm just going to write that on there, the nickel copper galvanic cell. Remember galvanic cell is made up of um, two beakers and we've got our salt bridge in the middle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to draw out the basic setup of a galvanic cell with nickel and copper. We're then going to write out the half reactions. Okay, so that's our oxidation and reduction, um, as well as our net ionic equation that will go with that. And then we're going to go and we're going to calculate the EMF that's produced by this galvanic cell. So let's get started. I'm going to start by drawing out the general um, kind of setup for a galvanic cell. So we have a beak on the left a beak on the right, and we've got a salt bridge that connects the two, and then a voltmeter connected to two electrodes. Right, and of course we've got our electrolyte, which is our liquid, just like that. Now, we don't know which electrode is which yet. Um, what I am going to do is I'm just going to label, just out of habit, I tend to always write out the anode on the left, you can do it either way. I'm going to put the anode on the left and the cathode on the right. But now the question is, if we're working with nickel and copper, which one is the anode and which one is the cathode? Okay, so quick little hint here. Always remember that oxidation happens always at the anode and reduction always happens at the cathode. And still, for some of you, might think, okay, great, I know what oxidation is, I know what reduction is, um, but how do we know which one is the anode and the cathode? And this is where we need to go to our table, our standard reduction potential table. And for you grade 12s, you've got a table 4A and a table 4B. Work with whichever one you are more comfortable with. Okay, you don't need to work with both. They're basically inverses of each other. So for the purposes of this video and for um, most of our students following in our online lessons, I'm going to use table 4B. So let's find nickel and copper. Go to your table, look for nickel, copper, underline them, and then we're going to see where their relative positions are. So I've written out the two equations from our Standard reduction potential tables, I've used 4B. If you're using 4A, it's just the inverse. Okay, so over here, our nickel is on top. Our, our nickel equation is higher than our copper equation on the table. And as a rule, if you're working with galvanic cells, okay, this only works with if we are working with galvanic cells, then the equation that is on table 4B that's higher up, Okay, that will be your oxidation. So oxidation, I'm just going to write the ox, would be the nickel. So the one on top is the oxidation. The one at the bottom, which is the copper, will be the reduction. Right, so that means, remember, what is an oxidation? An oxidation is a loss of electrons, so it means that the nickel reaction will start with nickel and move to the left. At the bottom, copper reduction is a gain of electrons, so we'll start with copper 2 and move to the right. Remember, oxidation happens at the anode and reduction happens at the cathode. So we now know where to label this on our sketch. So the anode would be the nickel, so let's go and put the Ni solid. And the cathode would be our Cu solid. So we now know where everything is going to be. Okay. The next thing I want to mention here is our salt bridge. So our salt bridge, which I've drawn in the middle, looks something like this and basically we put a saturated solution of any ionic compound inside your salt bridge. You have to just be careful because the substance you choose can't undergo any precipitation reactions because that could stop 
um, the functioning, the proper functioning of your galvanic cell. The safest thing to use if you're given the option is KNO3. Right, so KNO3, potassium nitrate, breaks up into K plus and NO3 minus. So I'm going to explain to you basically what, what happens in this whole thing. We've got nickel at our anode, which is going to undergo oxidation. So below, I'm going to write the reaction. It's going to be nickel solid, breaks down into nickel 2 plus aqueous, plus 2 electrons. You see that I've only drawn a single directional arrow there. So once you have decided it's oxidation, you, you take away that double arrow. It's no longer a double arrow anymore. And because it's gaining um, negative electrons, that electrode becomes negative. Our nickel ions move into your solution there, and then our solution becomes positive. Okay, so that's what's happening that side. Then let's change color to a gray, and we'll move over to the cathode. So on our copper side reduction, we've got Cu2 plus aqueous. Um, we add two electrons. I'm just squeezing it in there. Gives us, I just have to go up with my arrow, gives you Cu solid. So what's basically happening there is we are taking out our positives out of the solution. It's reacting and it's basically then because we're removing the positives, our solution is going to become slightly negative and our actual electrode becomes slightly positive. Okay, I hope you're with me so far. Electron direction. If we look at the anode, we've got a lot of negative um, electrons collecting there. Electrons are going to move from the anode to the cathode. And then you can see I've drawn already the direction of your ionic movement between the electrolyte and each um, electrode there. But now something happens in the salt bridge as well. So if we look on the left-hand side, I said to you with the anode, that liquid becomes positively charged. So we need to neutralize that. So if we've got in that salt bridge, if we have potassium nitrate, KNO3, specifically the NO3 minus ions, the nitrate ions are going to move into that side and they're going to neutralize those positive ions. And on the other side, the potassium, the K plus, will move into that beak over there and neutralize. And that is basically how we keep the current flowing over the inner galvanic cell. Okay, that's the basic functioning of a galvanic cell. This, you can practice this with any galvanic cell. Go and look on your table, determine which is oxidation reduction, and that will tell you which is anode, cathode. Always electrons will move from the anode to the cathode. Right, so I've just cleared the screen there a bit. I've kept our voltage values on. And the next thing I want to do is I want to calculate the EMF. So we've got a voltmeter up there at the top. And if I wanted to ask you what would that voltmeter read, that would be a calculation of EMF. And our EMF, we basically can work out with the equation that is given on your information sheet. So remember grade 12, so you do have it. You can look it up. Um, we've got this equation. So our cell potential is equal to cathode minus anode. Right, now look at our sketch. What is the cathode? The cathode is the copper. And if you look on your table, the copper value is positive 0, 0,34 volts. And then we have a minus. And then our anode, which is our nickel, um, is a minus 0, 0,27. We have a negative and another negative, which gives us a positive. And then our final answer over there will be a positive 0, 0,61 because then you, we basically add them together and volts. Now remember, you must get a positive. Galvanic cells will always have an EMF that is greater than 0 because the reaction happens spontaneously. Okay, so you must get a positive, and we did get that here. If you got a negative, something went wrong, go back and check your um, calculation again, because obviously something went funny there. So you, you would need to double check that. Something else I want to mention here is um, just in terms of naming the cell, 
It is called a galvanic cell and sometimes you might see it in questions, they might refer to it as a voltaic cell. So just so that you know, voltaic cell is exactly the same as a galvanic cell. Always look at your table. If it's on top, it's oxidation. So in this case, that was the nickel. If it's on the bottom, it's reduction. And in this case, it's the copper. So I hope this made sense for you guys. Um, if you are part of our online school and you are following our online lessons, then we are going to be continuing with galvanic cells in our next online lesson next week. Um, if you are following us on our videos, then remember to um, follow us on YouTube. All the videos are uploaded to YouTube and we are also on Facebook, so you can follow us there. And you can search for us both on YouTube and Facebook. Um, you can search for Amanda Own Online Education to follow our recap videos for grade 12. And if you'd like to find out more about our online lessons, you can visit our website at amandaowenonline.ca.za. Um, all our lessons are given in real time and they're interactive so you guys can also um, ask questions from your side and we interact um, through the whole time. And it is based on the South African curriculum. So pop over to the website and if you've got any questions, you are welcome to send us an email and we'll reply to you guys from there. So I hope this made sense.